bright and early morning and we're off. Um, we've been sheltering in Kilmore Quay for a couple of days, there's been weather. Uh, it's incredibly calm today, there's no wind at this point. We're not expecting any wind till about lunchtime and then we hope to have it behind us so we can do either a training run or a downwind run all the way up to Yarklow. It's been lovely in Kilmore, the harbour staff are great as always and have looked after us and uh, we got a nice relax in and that's always nice to have. But for today it's through the bridge, through St Patrick's Bridge, the big sandbar, to Carnsore Point and back into the Irish Sea. A disadvantage of uh, rafting is that you have got to be ready to go when the boat on the inside wants to go. So Beverly and I are up and dressed uh, because the boat that we're rafted to um, wants the south going tide. And of course that's six hours earlier than the tide that we want which is going north. So uh, it's something like just after five <laughs> And uh, yeah, we're up and dressed. And um, all we're all looking for and late waiting for is there's a boat uh, that's ahead of them that's supposed to be moving at five. They haven't started moving yet, but we're waiting for their engine to start. And as soon as we hear their engine starting, we'll be up out of the hatch like little jackrabbits. We're not really hearing much movement from the boat we are rafted to. No, I mean, so they're supposed to be going in about half an hour. And I've not even seen anybody on deck. I've gone and looked a couple of times, you know, but there's no point in us moving if they're not shifting around, you know. So I don't know what's going on, but we're ready. Well, we had organised ourselves to uh, film us uh, moving the boat. 
this morning, but it was one of those cases of uh, we were waiting, we were waiting and waiting, and then all of a sudden it was all action, all, we have to go now, and it's like brrrr. The other crew weren't really that bothered about being filmed, they just wanted to go. Yeah, they just wanted to go, so we just had to get on with it and, and basically allow them to get off, so we walked the boat forward, um, and now we've just walked the boat back and uh, got her all tidy so that when it's the north going tide we're ready to go. Sailing? Well, no, we're motoring. We were um, motor sailing. I was going to say earlier we were actually sailing, and I was just enjoying the sail. And I think we got to about three quarters of an hour of sailing. Mm. Wind oh. down to about six knots. Now the wind's down to about three knots. I just think, oh, goodness sake! Yeah, give you it, know, a, give us a break. Yeah, so we motor sailed for a bit longer, and now we're set. We've motoring but no we're motoring but we've only got about three hours of motoring to do till we're uh, more or less into Dublin. Yeah but I'm just hoping to goodness but we've got yet another storm to dodge. Yet yeah, another storm due in tomorrow at about lunchtime so there's no point in going north. After Dublin there's not really a lot of cover uh, going north so certainly the last marina is Malahide which is a few miles north of Dublin. Uh, until you get to, it's the last marina until you get to Bangor, no, Port of Ferry. Arklow, Port of Ferry. Our glass. Our glass. Our glass, our I glass. Forgot, I've forgotten about our glass. Yes, our glass. Yeah, which so, is way up in Northern Ireland, a heck of a distance from here. But what Gaynor has done is she's contacted some old friends of ours from the Royal St George Yacht Club, who a couple of years ago were very kind to us, and gave us a lovely time at their yacht club, and they've invited us back to uh, sit the store night. Now, but, um, they're being very generous to us and they're letting us have a uh, special rate on their pontoon. Well, it's uh, just the visitor rate they have. But yeah, but, uh, and they've invited us to a barbecue, so we're all, we're all made up for that, aren't we? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to one, a shower, and two, I might even put a dress on. Oh well, my god! I'm looking forward to some socialising and saying hello to people we've seen before. Yeah. Uh, because they were lovely to us last time we were in, so we'll see if we can get some footage. Just depends whether people want to be filmed or not. Um, but yeah, so the plan is go to Dublin, go to Royal St George's um, private pontoon, and um, sit the storm out. Mm. What a fantastic and way to spend it! Absolutely. But I'm, I'm, I'm all excited. Uh, yeah, as long as you're keeping an eye on pots. Cause yeah, pots there's another pair over there, but you know what? They're like 300 meters away, again. Yeah, there is true. <laughs> you know, try as hard as you might, you could not lob a biscuit and get anywhere near it. No. So stop panicking about it. Right? Just, Panic! Just, Panic! just because it's on the same side of the planet as you does not mean you're going to hit it. Ah! Like, give over. There was a yacht earlier that was coming quite close. He was going, oh, hey, there's a yacht. I can see it. I can see the people in the cockpit. Look at that. It's, it's, it's so close that if I yelled, they could probably hear me. And it's, yeah. That's right, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. Yachts, it's one of the reasons. Yachts I, do that, they, they, they go along it's in bunches. One of the reasons I couldn't cope with I, I'm not very good on close quarters, am I, Ben? It's why when we did um, dinghy racing and things like that, I did the helming. Yeah, I could not do that. Because it didn't bother me if I missed another dinghy by like that. Oh! Whereas Gainer would go, Mia! They need to be a good 20 metres away before I'm happy. <laughs> and that's just a dinghy. And these things, she doesn't like them within a kilometre. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, I've got a cup of tea to go and make.
we're currently in Dublin, uh, Dunleary, Royal St George Yacht Club to be precise. And um, they have very, very kindly allowed us to use their pontoon, which is lovely of them. So thank you very, very much Royal St George Yacht Club for that. And thank you to Peter, the secretary, and to Ronan, and also to the, um, the, the boat master, the berthing master. It's been wonderful to be here and sitting out the weather. The downside of it from our point of view is that from in here the weather doesn't look that bad out there. <laughs> so that's one of the downsides. But we know that it is actually not that nice. Um, we are hoping to get off tomorrow. The weather for tomorrow is a bit marginal. We have contacted a harbour halfway up the coast, a small fishing harbour called Port Oriel, and the harbour master says that if we need shelter we can duck in there. So that is very, very nice. Gaynor is currently off somewhere around Dunleary doing a bit of shopping, um, enjoying herself, and why not? We were out last night with some friends, Yvonne and John from Wave Dancer. They also have a boat, not in Royal St George, but in the marina next door. And we had a lovely night with them, thank you both to them. And we hope that they're going to come up and visit us in Bangor sometime, so that would be lovely. Um, we've got people walking around on the pontoon. So we've got to fill up the water and... Um, get some diesel, some spare diesel into the tank. We have had to motor more or less all the way from Kinsale to here because the wind hasn't been very strong and it's been behind us. If we were going into the wind, that 12 knots of wind would probably become about 16 or 17. We could sail close hold on that very easily. But when it's behind you and you're doing five knots away from it, that 12 knots comes down to seven knots and you can't really do an awful lot with seven knots. I mean, you'd be crawling along We've had a couple of minor crises as well. Um, one of our cameras that we used to take the long shots over the boat, um, for some reason, it wiped its chip clean. And we had some absolutely tremendous footage of some uh, bad weather sailing outside Arklo. And I'm afraid to say it's all gone. I ran re recovery utilities on it, but it is what it is. So the trip from Kinsale to here has been very dull. It's been a lot of motor sailing, which as you know, we don't really like to do much with because we don't like talking over the, um, the hum of the motor. And it's also boring. We tend to fall asleep when motor sailing. Beep, 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 go that way and the boat just does it. There's no particular skill involved. Ah, so we're on the home leg. Um, Dublin to Belfast is possible in one go if you get the right weather in the right direction with the right tides. And at the minute, those are not really help helping. The weather is not from the right direction. It's not the right kind of weather. And the tides are at the wrong time of day. The tide we want taking us north happens in the dark, pitch black. And there's all sorts of pots and obstructions and boats and things up there. So it's not really an ideal time to do it. <sighs> the joys of boating, eh? So I'm getting some dinner put together. Um, I'm currently passage planning. I've got my RSC pilot out. I've got the passage plan out. I've got the tide book out. And... I'm just going to do a plan in terms of relative tides. In other words, if you start at high water, you get to here by low water sort of thing. And then we'll work out what day's tides we want to put against those plans. But um, yeah, so we've had a very, very pleasant time here in Dunleary, but it's time to leave. It's time to go north and time to get back to Belfast. Our cruising season has been cut woefully short. It's been cut in half, but every time we look at the west coast, there's just another giant storm rolling in, and the one that's due at the end of the week, to be honest, looks like a tropical hurricane. It's enormous. It covers half the Atlantic. It's huge. Um, the one that's coming over at the minute is nowhere near as big. But this has just been the story of it. I'm talking to people over in England and people in Scotland and people... It's just not us here getting the bad weather here in Ireland, but any western coasts are, are more exposed, and they're getting it worse. So I think... Cutting it short, coming back up, was probably the right thing to do. We might go into the Clyde. It just depends what happens when we get back to Belfast, Northern Ireland. See my, see my mother, see how my aunt is doing. And if they're particularly well and the weather doesn't look too bad, we can always nip to the Clyde. It tends to be reasonably sheltered in there. But if we think we're just going to get a hammering in the Clyde, uh, I think we'll just cut the season short, to be honest. I don't know. It's all up in the air. And right now, the thing that's up in the air is onions because I've got a pork mole to make, otherwise Gainer will kill me. So I best get on it. <laughs> 